welcome to 2023. Uh, it's been a minute since I've been on the YouTube, so super quick update. Over the last two years, I've been focusing, focusing specifically on vintage patterns. Uh, I've been working out of a set of magazines, uh, the Australia Women's Weekly, uh, which you can find through trove.au. Uh, it's a huge dig digitization project, that word is very hard to say, um, where they're going through and looking at some of the older magazines and newspapers and going ahead and getting them digitized and put up online and are available to the public for free. So thank you for doing that. Uh, basically, you are the you guys are the reason I've been able to do this project. So, support your local libraries, everybody. Anyway, uh, so I would like to go over some of the projects that what I have completed, what I currently have on my needles, and then what are going to be the upcoming projects and a little bit of the background about them. So, what have I already completed within 2023? Which is a super cute little, uh, it's called a the it's a mesh blouse. It is crocheted. I know I'm in here to talk about knitting, and the first thing I show you is a crochet project. But anyway, <laughs> I wanted a break. Uh, so this is a super cute blouse. I have gone ahead and made it. Let me grab off my wall of doom here. This is Peru alpaca fine from Ice Yarns, um, and this is 350 meters per 50 grams. So I did this, to me this looks pink, everybody else says it looks purple, whatever, I use this color. Um, and I use a very tiny hook, <laughs> very tiny, I think it's like a two millimeter hook, something right around in there. Uh, stupidly small is what it is. The pattern for this one is actually really, really easy to do. The actual mesh pattern, let me get this close. This is two, just two rows over and over again. Makes uh, for a very nice bit there. And each one of these little mesh bits here, it's approximately one inch. This is supposed to be for a size 36 inch bust, uh, but I can tell you right now that the bust on this actually comes out to being like 40 something inches. Uh, and the waist down here actually comes out to being like about 30-ish inches. A uh, quick thing on the pattern for this, um, the actual written instructions, which I believe I got from Free Vintage Knitting, um, and I'll go ahead and pop that down below. I've had this pattern for quite some time. Um, the actual instructions for this, as with most vintage things, is uh, sparse. So, whenever you get into vintage patterns, there's going to be things that tend to be left out of the instructions for whatever reason. Things like, what is your gauge? Does it tell you? No. Does it tell you what your finish size is? No. Does it tell you about all the materials that you're going to need? No. Uh, does it tell you that you will need to make buttonholes? Does it explain about gathering down the sleeves? Also no. Uh, does it help you in figuring out how to do some of the decreases for your collar? Not really. So, this was an interesting bit of frustration. Um, it is knit in what became for me five pieces, so a front, back, two sleeves, and then I made the collar separately and went ahead and and stitched that one on um, and then I added the the button band the little tiny button band and buttons separately these are functional buttons by the way um, there you go there's a little little teeny tiny button band right there um, these are functional buttons uh, crochet does not have the same amount of stretch in it that regular knitting does or regular ribbing has so these you actually do need them <laughs> Um, I'll probably remake this, um, to be more size inclusive because it only comes in one size and I will also make it longer because these side seams here, so from the armpit all the way down to the hem, 
So that, that spot right there, about 10 inches. And if you don't sew or knit a lot, you may not realize how incredibly tiny that is. This is a crop top. <laughs> I am five foot three and a half inches. The half inch is very important. Um, and I need mine to be about, my side seems to be four, between 14 and 15 inches just to be able to uh, cover down to my pants. So at 10 inches, this is a crop top. But it's a very comfortable crop top. Um, and it actually is pretty easy to make. You will need to do a little bit of seaming, but not a whole, whole lot. Will I make it again? Hmm. I'll, I'll correct for any issues and then probably make that again. All right, so next, go ahead and talk about what I have on my needles. Um, this is an original sign. It's kind of a play off of this one here. So you can see it's kind of like a, a v-neck, really simple version of this. There you can actually see what it looks like all unfolded. Ta-da! That's the front. Let's actually move it up closer so you can see there. Um, and I have the front, the back, and one sleeve done. So I just need to make the other sleeve and then sew everything together and pop a collar on it and boom, we're finished. Um, this has been sitting in my, in my knitting bag for like a month, which is a really long time for me. Um, under most normal circumstances, it's a long time for me. So I just want to get it done. And hopefully next time we see each other, I will be able to show you what that looks like. Uh, the pattern for this, it's done at, it's eight stitches per inch. So this is a 36 inch bust. Um, and it's done at eight stitches per inch, um, which sounds super small and this looks complicated. It's really not. It's a very, very small slender pattern each one of these is like one pattern, but it's 38 rows tall. So it actually goes really quickly. Um, it goes really, really quickly. And just so you can see that little tiny, tiny bit right there on the sleeve. Um, but like I said, hopefully I'll have that done soon and then I will be able to get a pattern out to you guys so that you can actually make it on your own. So woohoo! The next one, Next thing is what's going to be coming up next. So after I finish this, what am I going to be doing? So we have two options. Step one is going to basically be remaking the cardigan that I'm wearing right now. I only have like two cardigans currently in my closet. Uh, I get cold pretty easily, so I layer. <laughs> I become the onion um, and layer. Uh, and I would like to have another one of these because it's still winter and it gets cold. So here is the vintage pattern I am using that I have used as inspiration. This is a men's lumber jacket. I, I don't know if you have noticed one of the, the issues with this is that it's huge. This is supposed to be for a 40 inch chest. Um, and is not necessarily for a man that is, you know, an NBA player, but um, at least the instructions didn't say that, but it turns out that that's what this pattern is for, is somebody who's like seven foot tall. Um, because, like I said, you can, you can just see, like it just, it just keeps going and going and going. <laughs> the sleeves, the sleeves are ridiculous. Um, and I, I swear I made this as it is written, but other than the length on it, um, there are a number of things about this pattern that I really, really like. Step one, I really love the garter stitch button band and uh, collar there. I really like that. I think that it looks super nice. And when I redesigned it, I went ahead and I kept the garter stitch on there. Um, I just think it, it looks really, really good. Uh, the other thing, I happen to like the set in sleeve, so I kept that um, somewhat longer cuff. Now, not 
this long for the ribbing, but I did like having that there. Um, I may actually make another one of these longer ribbing just so that I can do things like fold up the cuff. But the big thing that I really enjoyed about this, let me get this closer. There is like a mock ribbing pattern that's on there. And I really like that. Um, I think that it still creates a bunch of texture without being like, it, it, it's texture with a little T, not texture. Like it's, it wants to jump off this cardigan and just punch you in the face. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that, but sometimes you just want things that will work well with, with any bit of your wardrobe. So in redesigning it, I've tried to keep that like a mock ribbing sort of setup there. Um, keep the garter stitch band, keep it a cardigan and keep it a v-neck. Um, sadly, these have non-functional pockets on them. So if I'm feeling froggy, who knows, I may put those on. I did not put them on this one, uh, but I may put them on in the future. And I have gone ahead and already gauged out my yarn. This is from, this is the Cristal, it's an ice yarn and it's 100% acrylic, which fiber content wise, not a huge fan, but I got it when it was on sale. And this means that I will be able to uh, just throw it in the wash and it'll be fine. I'm not worried about it felting. I just don't put it in the dryer so it doesn't melt because um, it's acrylic. But this is about 900 meters per 100 grams approximate. So this is, again, it's fairly thin. This is done at seven stitches to the inch, but because of the, the simpler pattern to it, again, let me move this up so you can see, it's got stockinette ribbing and then it's got some moss stitch ribbing, which does lead to some interesting ideas as far as reversibleness. Um, this goes together super quickly. Um, it's pretty easy to seam. These are, this pattern is pretty versatile. I really like it. I'm actually really proud of this one. And this is one that I did all the math for. So that is a possibility. The other one, and I may, may I'm probably gonna do some longer videos on this. This is a men's flower uh, color work. This is gorgeous. This is the original, um, and you can tell here I've done this, and that is actually not black, it's, it's dark purple. <laughs> but I've done this in purple pinks with a tan background, um, and it is absolutely gorgeous. The body fits perfectly, the collar fits perfectly. The only problem that I, well, I have two problems. And, uh, two structural problems. One is that the sleeves are too narrow, which means when I put this on, um, as long as I don't want to do things like raise my arms um, and maintain blood flow at the same time. So as long as I stand like this, this thing works. Um, I'm probably going to go ahead and uh, cut off part of these sleeves and then re knit on some other ribbing there so I can actually wear this because I really, really like it. It's very beautiful. Like I said, the body fits just perfectly. Um, the other issue that I have as far as like a structural thing is that there are several places in here like this where we do have three colors per row and I just, I don't like having that there. Um, I feel that it creates unnecessary bulk and because you you're you could end up putting extra strain on some of those threads it just it feels like you're asking for your thread to, to snap on you and with vintage like i said a lot of these are done at a fairly fine gauge so you're looking at seven to eight stitches per inch and you you don't want to have a thread snap on you at that fine a gauge you, you just you just don't 
Trust me on that. Um, but this thing is gorgeous. The other issues that I had, and it it's harder to tell here because this has much higher contrast, but in real life, in an everyday scenario, uh, this pink is much more subtle and that, that was a me decision, so that's not a pattern issue. But, because again, this comes in one size. I went ahead and reworked the pattern and made it more size inclusive. So this goes, you know, you could be uh, have a 28 inch bust all the way up to a 64 inch bust and you'll have an option here um, with this one that I've redone to wear. Um, now I've gone ahead and expanded out the flowers a little bit and made these eyeballs a little bit bulkier. But I also happen to love this sweater as well. This is done, believe it or not, this is this is a dark purple. It's actually not black, but it's uh, five colors. A lot of fun, a little bit of color mat pattern matching here. Um, but other than that, the, the silhouette or outline of the garment is really, really simple. You're not gonna have any, uh, any shaping from the body. There's a little bit for the sleeves and that's about it. And I am working on this, doing it with a silk merino. And let me grab all my colors but going ahead and using these colors here. So, give you an idea of what that would look like. There's the start of my swatch. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna go ahead and just do the color work one or the cardigan. I may do the cardigan just because, you know, I need a cardigan, it's a quick, easy win. And then I'll get on top of this so that you guys can uh, kind of walk you through the pattern and uh, show you how it's done. It's actually really, really simple. You know, once you get past all the, the, the chart, um, it's very, it's, it's very simple. And it's very easy to seam up. Um, and all of these I am doing in piecework because once you know how to seam, working on the round is pretty easy from there. So I'm teaching the most complicated thing first. Anyway, so that's what's been uh, going on. And those are the plans for the future. So I hope you guys have been having a good year so far and uh, I will update you pretty soon with what's been going on or what I'll be working on next. All right, bye.